bringing you the world for 25 years. This is CNN. As a rule, news photographers try to remain dispassionate about their subjects. But as we know, sometimes rules get broken. And when photographer Max Betcherer learned that one of the Marines he'd photographed had died, he was moved to tell the rest of the story. In October of 2004, I was in Iraq with Time Magazine, and we were embedded in uh, Ramadi. And from Ramadi, the 1st Marine Division asked us to come to Fallujah. From then on, I spent about two months in Fallujah, I did patrols outside Fallujah. There's one squad that I hung out with quite a bit, and the squad leader was Corporal Eric Shelby, and he had two team leaders in that squad, um, Lance Corporal Gregory Rund and Lance Corporal Jeremy Miller. Gregory Rund was the kind of person that you would meet, and in the States, he would just be like the class clown. By three or four days into the Battle of Fallujah, he's leading his team, and I guess we fought for about a week. That was about the end of November, and I decided that, well, I think I might go home for Christmas. A few days later, it was December 11th, and I was in Times Square, and I'd heard that someone had been killed in Fallujah from the unit, and one of the mothers had emailed me and told me that was Greg. I was trying to take in that I was not going to see him again. And there's a news ticker that says, one Marine killed Ambar Province. And I just realized how cold those words are. I mean, you could read that, and you wouldn't know anything about that. There's one person killed. What does that mean? No, it's Lance Corporal. Gregory Rund was killed in Ambar Province in Fallujah. When I showed up at the funeral, I wasn't sure what I was going to see in there how welcome I would be, and I stepped in. and. Jane, his mother, saw me, and she just stepped right up to me and gave the most just kind of soul-shaking hug. I was the last person at the funeral that had seen him alive, and so that meant that much more to her. When you're in Iraq, you see a lot of violence, and you can't deal with it all right at that moment. You take it in, and then when you go home at some point, you try to deal with it. And so when I went, went back with the unit, I asked Jeremy if I could go back home with them and tell their story. Jeremy Miller had still had a few belongings of Greg's. And they had spoke previously to the Battle of Fallujah that here's a few belongings and if something happens to me, take these. Jane had said she was going to meet them at Camp Pendleton when they came home. We got in pretty much in the middle of the night and immediately Bobby and Debbie, uh, Jeremy's parents, came to greet him and uh, his girlfriend Celeste was there and they were hugging him and holding him. And as he's doing this, you go look in the back of the room, and Mark and Jane, who is Greg's parents, were standing there. And it's a strange kind of awkward scenario, because it could be either one's family that was, you know, switched in their placement in life. And then Jane came up, Jeremy greeted them, and you could tell you just didn't know what to think exactly. I mean, you come out of this scenario and this experience, and maybe you're kind of prepared for this to happen. But I don't think they're prepared to come home and deal with it. I don't think they're prepared to come home and look at the mother of their best friend that you know was left behind there. Jeremy was able to come home, and I, while he'd been away, Celeste was making intense plans for a wedding. <laughs> and so when he went back to Deer Park, Texas, they had this, uh, this very nice wedding ceremony set up outside, and was, uh, just outside his hometown. On April 30th, Marines held a memorial for the fallen. And Greg was one of those. Members of his unit were on leave, but on uh, Jane Run's request, they came to attend. But it's an opportunity for the Marines to come and, and show their compassion for them and hopefully share some stories. The Marines came early for this event and they visited Jane and Greg's family. They went together and they visited Greg's gravesite. And a lot of the Marines kicked around and just silently looked at the gravesite of their friend and I think at that point you just realize that they're trying to grapple with the fact that it could be them. Jeremy talked about he just, he hates going to these things because it brings it up again and again and you want to get it out of your mind, you want to continue. And when that ceremony was over, I think that was it for him. I mean, he saw the gravesite and he had a place to put Greg's memory. We'll have some closing thoughts in just a moment.